You've probably watched a lot of money heist films, but nothing comes close to the life of Bernie Madoff. But who is Bernie Madoff? What did he do so big that he got a sentence of 150 years? Don't touch that dial as we uncover one of the biggest and longest real life scams that saw billions of dollars lost by one man. Bernie Madoff, a prominent investment advisor on Wall Street, gained worldwide notoriety for running what may be the most significant Ponzi scheme ever discovered. In 2008, after investigations by the FBI and SEC, it was revealed that Madoff's fraud had caused investors to suffer losses exceeding $50 billion over almost two decades. But before all this, let's go back and see how his early life was. Early Life and Education Bernie Madoff was born to Ralph and Sylvia Madoff on April 29, 1938, in Brooklyn, New York. Bernie graduated from Hofstra University with a bachelor's degree in political science in 1960 and briefly attended Brooklyn Law School. Bernie married his high school sweetheart, Ruth Nealpern, while in college, and they later founded Bernard L. Madoff Investment Securities LLC in 1960. He began trading penny stocks with $5,000 he earned while installing sprinklers and working as a lifeguard. He quickly encouraged family members and others to join him in his venture. But he soon encountered problems after the 1962 Kennedy slide in the market. Accomplishments According to Madoff, he started his career as a scrappy market maker. I was absolutely glad to accept the crumbs, he told Fishman, citing a client who wanted to sell eight bonds. A larger business would reject such an order but Madoff's would fulfill it. Success came when he and his brother, Peter, started to develop computerized trading capabilities, artificial intelligence, in Madoff's words. That drew large order flows and helped the firm by offering insights into market behavior. All these large banks were coming down to entertain me, Madoff told Fishman. That was all in my brain. He and four other Wall Street heavyweights handled half of the New York Stock Exchange's order flow, much of which he paid for, and by the late 1980s, Madoff was generating about $100 million per year. Madoff was appointed NASDAQ chairman in 1990 and served again in 1991 and 1993. Let's now turn to the big thing, the scheme. Madoff's investment strategy of split-strike conversion initially gained him investors by promising high and stable returns. Madoff's apparently ultra-high profits induced customers to turn a blind eye. In fact, he simply deposited their money in an account at Chase Manhattan Bank, which merged to become J.P. Morgan Chase & Co. in 2000, and sat on them. According to one estimate, the bank might have gained up to $435 million in after-tax profit on such investments. As customers wanted to redeem their investments, Madoff paid the reimbursements with fresh funds, which he lured by building a reputation for incredible profits and groomed his victims by winning their confidence. Madoff also developed a reputation of exclusivity, sometimes turning away customers initially. This technique enabled nearly half of Madoff's investors to benefit. Some investors Investors have been obliged to contribute to a victim's fund to recompense defrauded investors who had lost money. Madoff put up a show of respectability and charity, leering investors with his humanitarian activity. He also scammed several NGOs, including the Ellie Weisel Foundation for Peace and the worldwide women's charity Hadassah. He approached worshippers using his acquaintance with J. Ezra Merkin, an officer at Manhattan's Fifth Avenue Synagogue. According to different reports, Madoff defrauded its members of $2.4 billion. One of the most puzzling parts of the Bernie Madoff case is why he ever committed the scam in the first place. Madoff's genuine brokerage firm was a huge success, and he and his family became enormously rich. He has no financial reason to defraud thousands of customers out of billions of dollars. Madoff's Ponzi scheme was run via the wealth management division of his company. It was a classic and terrifyingly easy Ponzi scam. Madoff enticed investors by offering exorbitant profits on their investments. As investors gave up their money, Madoff deposited it into his Chase Manhattan bank account. He paid returns to previous investors using money from subsequent investors. Customers' trading statements, which purported to reflect their stated earnings, were total fabrications. But how was he caught? Let's see about that. 
But before we move on to the story of how Madoff got caught, be sure to hit that like and subscribe button for more exciting stories. And if that's already done, let's move on. If Madoff knew what awaited him in 2008, he would have changed his ways, but he was too greedy for that. In 2008, everything crashed when many investors decided to pay out their stakes, totaling roughly $7 billion. Madoff lacked sufficient funds to pay the proposed withdrawals. According to Madoff, he could only come up with a few hundred million at the time. Another unresolved mystery surrounding Madoff's Ponzi scheme was when it started and how it went undiscovered for so long. Several former Madoff workers allege the scheme began in the 1970s. Madoff claimed that it started in the 1990s. Several sources' estimates lie somewhere around the middle of that period. Incredibly, Madoff was able to keep the scam hidden for so long. Individuals had petitioned the Securities and Exchange Commission to probe Madoff's business methods as early as 1992, and the agency had done so multiple times but had failed to discover the vast scam. Several Wall Street businesses distrusted Madoff, and some refused to trade with him. Yet, Madoff was able to conceal this huge Ponzi scheme for at least a few decades. The Aftermath Finally, Bernie Madoff was caught in 2008 and sentenced to 150 years in prison in 2009. The US government eventually offered more than $700 million in compensation to defrauded Madoff investors, but this number paled in contrast to the billions upon billions of dollars that investors had already been scammed out of. Yet, it is true that some of Madoff's early investors were able to recoup their whole investment, plus a handsome reward. And that's the story of the evilest man in Wall Street history, Bernie Madoff. What would you do as a victim of Madoff? Let us know in the comment section below. See you in the next video. Peace.